All right, guys. Uh, today we're going to be talking about analysis. So chemical analysis. Uh, in this case, the first video, this video, is going to be on what we call uh, sequential precipitations. And honestly, this is like a really cool kind of uh, skill. And the reason why it's cool is because it's kind of like a little bit of a brain teaser. Uh, these, the questions that you're going to get, the questions that I've assigned actually for, I think it's assignment 22, they, um, they are about precipitations. And then after that, we talk a little bit about analysis, uh, which is, or quantitative, which is actually figuring out the amount of something, the amount of chemical in a solution. So the first part, precipitation, all we're talking about is how to get specific chemicals to precipitate. In other words, if you remember a precipitate, it's when a kind of compound cannot dissolve in water, so it just sinks down to the bottom of the beaker. And so why would we want to do that? What we can do, uh, it, it leads into quantitative analysis. If we know how to have a solution that's got a certain kind of chemical in it that we want to precipitate, if we can figure out how to make it turn into a solid, then we can filter the solid, dry it out, and weigh it. And if we know the mass of the new solid that we made, we can go backwards and find out how much uh, of that ion was actually in the original solution. So first of all, we need to learn how to do pre uh, precipitations correctly. Now, back in the day, back at the start of, geez, even back in Science 10, we asked you guys to figure out if certain chemicals were soluble or not. So we might give you something like this. And we would ask you to determine if it was soluble in water or insoluble. How do we do that? We go to our solubility chart here. Uh, I just cut this out from uh, the data booklet. So it's the exact same one that you guys have. So let's look at this guy here. This is iron 2 nitrate. Why is it iron 2? Because the charge of the iron in this ionic compound is plus two. So it's made out of iron that has a plus two charge. And each of those irons with a plus two charge is hooked up to two nitrate ions. Remember that whenever we have an ionic compound, the charges must balance. So two minuses balance out my two plus from the iron. But how do we know if this is going to be bracket S or bracket AQ? Well, pretty simply. We go across the top, we find one of the ions, uh, generally it's going to be negative ions up here. The only uh, exceptions are, we talk about group one ions. Those are all of your ions that have a plus one charge, like Na plus and K plus, etc. So group one ions are the ones that have a plus one charge. So. The nice thing about that, what it literally means is um, all group one ions are soluble in water. So sodium anything. Sodium fluoride, yeah. Sodium chloride, yeah. Sodium sulfate, yeah. Sodium carbonate, phosphate, sulfite, iodate, oxalate, hydroxide. All of the sodium ions are soluble in water. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for nitrates and what they're going to do with Fe2+. So uh, I'm going to find F, or I'm going to find nitrate in my top row. There it is. And now I'm going to go down, and I'm going to look in these two boxes here. So I look down here, and these are the only ones in this column that are bracket S. So I'm looking at, at this molecule. It's definitely not RbClO4. It's not CsClO4. It's not silver acetate. So if it's not in the bottom category, and it says most in the top category, that means that FeNO32 is soluble. So this molecule 
his bracket AQ. I hope we can follow that. It makes a lot of sense. So we go across the top, then we go down the column and we find out which box our molecule of interest is in. So let's say that we have a sample of water that has been polluted with Fe2+. And we want to add something so that we can get that Fe2 plus to precipitate and sink down to the bottom. So we got to hook it up with an ion instead of nitrate. We got to add something in here, an ion that will make it uh, not be soluble. And so we got to do a little bit of an opposite move here. We have to go in reverse a little bit. So here's my little water line. Here's my precipitate. So when you are trying to find an ion that will cause precipitation, obviously we want to look down here. So I'm going to look for Fe2 plus in the bottom row. So if I look down here, Fe2 plus is not in any of these, so it doesn't help me. But if I look on the next column, hey look, it's Fe2 plus. Interesting. That means that when Fe2 plus is hooked up with F minuses, fluoride ions, it will precipitate. Again, another way of saying that is that if we figure out a way to make that, it will be bracket S, and then we can collect it and we can filter it out. So we need to find a way to bring some F minus ions into the mix. Now, the best and cheapest way is to use sodium ions as your positive ions. So what we're going to do is quite literally a double replacement reaction. I need to bring F minuses into the mix, so I'm going to hook them up with a sodium ion. Again, the reason why is because all sodium uh, ionic compounds are soluble in water. So I'm going to do the following reaction. Remember, I'm starting out with FeNO3, 2. That's my iron 2 nitrate. And here's what I'm going to do. Oh, and it's aqueous, by the way. And that's our problem, remember? We don't like that. We want to knock this ion out. So we are going to add sodium fluoride solution. Because the sodium is just there to carry my fluoride ions, but when the fluoride ions get close to the Fe2 pluses, they're going to form FeF2 bracket S. So I'm just going to balance this guy out. We're going to have Fe, F2, and that is soluble. And the beautiful thing about using sodium for our positive ion, first good thing, remember, it carries the negative ion that's going to react and form a precipitate, a solid. The other beautiful thing is that sodium ions, they will stay in solution, which means that I'm going to get two NaNO3s, and they stay inside of the solution, which means they don't precipitate. And you might be thinking, well, well, who cares? Think about it this way. We only want one thing to precipitate at a time. That's why this works. So what if we do um, an ion or a net ionic equation? So this is our total balanced chemical equation. Remember to do a net ionic equation what we do is we break everything that is aqueous up into its components. So we break everything that is aq into ions. So here I have an Fe2 plus ion, and that's aqueous. 
I have nitrate, but I have two of them. So I have two NO3 ion, and that's aqueous. I have, oops, get my charge there. I have two Na plus ion. That's also aqueous. And I have two F minus ion. That's aqueous. Then I have my reaction arrow. I have an FeF2 solid. I don't write the ions. Remember when it's bracket S, when it's a solid, it does not break down into ions. That's literally the point. It loves hanging out, Fe and F and uh, F minus. They like hanging out so much that they're gonna stick together. That's why they don't wanna dissolve in water. They cannot be solvated, if you remember that word. They don't like to be surrounded by water molecules. They would rather just hang out with each other. So we've got our Na plus aqueous, and we've got our two nitrates, two NO3 minus aqueous. So once we have everything that is gonna turn into ions, separated into its ions, we cross out stuff that is on either side of the arrow. So I have two NO3 here, and I have two NO3 here. Those cancel. I have two Na plus here. I have two Na plus here. So everything else uh, can't be crossed out. So I have Fe2 plus aqueous. plus 2F minus aqueous, making FeF2 aqueous, or sorry, F, ooh, whoops, FeF2 solid. FeF2 solid. So long story short, if we add sodium fluoride to this polluted water, it's going to form FeF2, which is going to precipitate. It's also gonna form sodium nitrate, which will not precipitate. It's going to form just an aqueous ionic compound. Are there other chemicals that we could use to do this? Of course. So I'm still gonna use FeNO3. I'm just gonna give you guys one more example of something else we could use. Because really, this comes down to kind of like a bit of creativity. So we still, we're still dealing with this Fe2 plus ion. And I need to somehow knock it out. So if I look here, yeah, we already tried F minus and it worked. Can I use any of these? No. Look, uh, copper one, silver, lead two, and, and thallium. Those are the ones that are insoluble. So that means that uh, FeCl2, is bracket aqueous. FeBr2, also aqueous. FeI2, aqueous. So we can't use anything that carries these. We move on to the next group, sulfate. Can I use sodium sulfate to knock iron out? We look down here and it looks like no, because all of these, none of these are iron. How about sodium uh, carbonate? which would be Na2CO3. Does that do the trick? Can that chemical knock out my iron? The only things, the only carbonates that are soluble are group one and ammonium. All other carbonates are insoluble, which means that FeCO3, that's iron two carbonate, is solid. That means that we can use it, we can use sodium carbonate to knock that ion out. So our equation would be FeNO32, that's my iron two nitrate and that is aqueous. We hit it with Na2 CO3, that's sodium carbonate, and that's gonna be aqueous. You always wanna use an, a, a solution. So you wanna pour a liquid in and that will knock the, comp, the ion of interest out. 
So that's going to make FeCO3. And that guy is bracket S. It's a solid. And then it'll make two NaNO3s. And those are aqueous because sodium nitrate is always soluble no matter what. How about one where it's a little bit more difficult? I'm just going to erase this, uh, this business. What if there's like two ions that you want to isolate? You have to do what's called sequential um, precipitation. In other words, you precipitate one and you collect the solid. Then you precipitate the other one and you collect the solid. So let's say that we have two ions in here. We have Pb2 plus and we have Ag plus. And we want to try to separate them because they're in a solution. They're all mixed together in, in a solution and they're all dissolved. So we've got Pb2 plus aqueous. We've got Ag2 plus or Ag plus aqueous. The key to this is still going to be our salt table. table. So here's what we do. I'm going to just try to find one of these, one column that only has one of the things in it. Because if I find one that has two of the things in it, uh, I'm goofing and I'm going to knock both out. So what would happen if we used sulfate? So if I used Na2SO4 aqueous. So here's my Na or here's my sulfate ion. This is a screw up. This is not going to work because look, there's Ag plus in there and there's also Pb2 plus. So if I add sodium sulfate, both of the chemicals that I care about will drop and, and precipitate at the same time, which means they're still going to be together, which is not what I want. I want to do two reactions that separate only one each time. So that's not going to work. We got we to think of something else. So how about Cl? What if I hit this guy with NaCl aqueous? That's sodium chloride, regular old table salt. Although you wouldn't want to use table salt because salt that you get at the, so at the store like Sifto or Windsor or whatever, that's got iodine in it or iodide, iodate, it's actually got this guy in here. And that will screw all of your business up. So we don't want that. But if we use pure lab grade sodium chloride, what happens to our solution? Ooh, bad news. Silver and lead are both in here. So if we add sodium chloride to this, both of these will precipitate at the same time, which is not great. So instead, I gotta think of something else. Uh, ooh. Here's one that's quite interesting. I could use sodium acetate. So that would be NaCH3COO aqueous. Why is that safe to use as my first move? Well, it's only going to do one reaction. So it's going to do this reaction. This is going to be just the net ionic. Because we know the sodium is going to be soluble no matter what. So we have Ag plus in my solution. And again, we don't care what the other ion is. It's probably like nitrate or something. Who cares? But we have Ag plus aqueous, and we're going to hit it with a source of acetate. We're going to use sodium acetate. And that's going to make Ag CH3COO. 
bracket S. It's a solid. So what we do with this, it sinks down as a solid to the bottom of my container and I pour it away. I, like I, I'll pour the liquid or I'll filter it. I'll get, I'll probably wash it with a little bit of extra water just to make sure that all of the uh, sodium or all the lead ions wash through. Then we'll only have one thing left in my solution because I already separated this off and now I've got like a little pile of powder that is sodium, or sorry, that is silver uh, acetate. So now I gotta just deal with the lead. When I only have one thing in the solution, I can use whatever I want as long as it has PB2 plus on the bottom or most. So you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get fancy. I'm gonna hit this guy with um, sodium hydroxide. So for this one, I'm gonna use NaOH, aqueous. So sodium hydroxide, what's gonna happen there? Well, we know that the sodium is the spectator. It's not gonna matter at all. So how are we, uh, how's the reaction gonna proceed? What's the net ionic equation here? It's gonna be PB2 plus aqueous from what's left in our solution. And we're gonna need two OH minuses because we need two minuses to balance out a two plus. And that's going to form PBOH2. <clears throat> so PB bracket OH end bracket two. And that guy is solid. Now you might wonder, okay, well, damn, that, there's a lot of, uh, now we've got like a whole crap load of CH3COO in my, or sorry, Na plus in my solution. And OH minus is not gonna be there because it's precipitated. So now we have just loaded this solution up. Whatever liquid is left is gonna be loaded with Na plus. Um, it's easier to separate um, those kinds of chemicals. At least we know they're not toxic. Yes, sodium hydroxide is a strong base, but we could tweak the pH by adding a little bit of acid. Like it's much easier and much less harmful than having lead ions in a solution. I'm gonna do one more for you and I know it's running a little bit long. I'm gonna do one that has three uh, ions inside. So I'm just gonna erase all of this. And this is like, like a difficult mode question. This is a hard mode question for sure. So let's say we have <clears throat> calcium ions. Let's say we have Oops, let's not do strontium actually. Let's do magnesium. Two plus. And then let's have lead. Two plus. So our job as Chem 20 is to be able to figure out how to get these to precipitate. And we wanna do them, remember, one at a time. We don't wanna ever drop two things into precipitate simultaneously. We always wanna do one at a time. So I'm looking down here and I wanna find Ca2 pluses, Mg2 pluses, or Pb2 pluses. So let's see, if I use F minus, we're gonna knock out the magnesium, the calcium, and the lead. Doesn't work. If I use so, or, um, sulfate ion, I knock out the calcium and the lead at the same time. That's not gonna work for me. So, the first thing I need to do, 
let's see, copper one, silver one, or silver, PB2 plus. Okay, so that means that if I use one of these, I will knock out the lead only. It's not going to do anything to my calcium. It's not going to do anything to my magnesium. So this is beauty. This is good stuff. So I'm going to use uh, N, A, B, R. I could use NaCl, I could use NaI, who cares? All of them are going to do, they all behave the same way. So this means that my first reaction is going to be between the PB2 plus ion, and we're going to need two Br minus ions. These are all aqueous at the moment. And it's going to form PB Br2. And because lead is down here, that's bracket S. So we precipitated, in other words, made it into we made our we knocked our lead ions out and now they are a solid. They're hooked up with the Brs. Now what I can do is filter that. So now my Br or my PB is taken care of. So it's no longer in my solution. What are the two ions that remain in my solution? Calcium ion and magnesium ion. So then, so this will be step one. I'll use sodium bromide. How do I get the other two separated? If I want to precipitate the other one, let's see, can I use sulfate? Yeah, I can use sulfate. Look, calcium sulfate is not soluble in water. But magnesium sulfate, I don't see Mg down here. That means Mg at, uh, two SO, or MgSO4 will be up here. So that means my second move is going to be Na2SO4 aqueous. How does that work? Well, calcium is going to form a bracket S with that. So I'll have Ca2+. Plus and SO4 2 minus, and these are aqueous, remember. And that's going to simply form CaSO4, calcium sulfate. So there we go. Now, now that solution is going to drop the calcium sulfate. We collect that maybe rinse it with some ice cold water just to make sure that all the mg washes off sometimes ions get stuck it's not that they're solid or they, they've become a solid it's just they stick on stuff if you've ever left a glass of water out in like in a room and then the water is evaporated you can still see where how like where the water was initially that's because there's a little bit of there's some ionic compounds in your water very small amounts but they leave a like a you know a, a residue they leave leftovers so we want to make sure we wash all of our Mg off. Now we have to precipitate the Mg. And now we've got like, we can go, we can go crazy. We can use any of these. Like magnesium carbonate would be bracket S. Magnesium iodate, bracket S. Magnesium hydroxide, bracket S. We can do whatever we want, really. Um, I'm just going to be lazy and I'm going to use magnesium, or sorry, uh, sodium fluoride, NaF. So my third move, because now we've, oops, we've taken care of the calcium, we need to get the magnesium out. So we'll use NaF aqueous. In other words, sodium fluoride. How does that work? Well, it's going to be supplying me with F minus ions, they're going to hook up with the Mg2 pluses and they will form a solid. So I'll see Mg2 plus, and at the start it's aqueous, remember. And then we need two fluoride ions to cancel them out or to react, and that's going to form MgF2. And now we've precipitated all three. Um, another move other than Na 
that you can use if you're ever um, kind of wondering. You can use acids. So I could have used something like HBr here because all acids are soluble. I could have used H2SO4 here, sulfuric acid. That would knock my uh, uh, calcium out. And here I could have used HF, hydrofluoric acid. That would have knocked the magnesium out. Although, I'll tell you here right now, HF is a flippin' nightmare. Acids are generally pretty sketchy. It's better to use a sodium ionic compound, but you could just as easily use an acid. Um, the only uh, exception would be if you're trying to use OH. Uh, H2O doesn't really, doesn't cut it. It's not going to work. So you'd have to use like, yeah, HIO3 or H2CO3 or H3PO4 or yeah, you, ha you can't Put the you can't hook the uh, H plus up to this because it just makes water. So better safe than sorry. Always use a sodium ion for your positive ion, so it can carry the special ions that are going to knock out your metals that are giving you problems. Hope that helps you out. The next one, uh, video is going to be on uh, how to do math with this. So quantitative analysis.